My friends, let's not forget who fell, who fought, and indeed who succeeded at taking over this territory. Our flag is now planted firmly into the soils of this new territory that we just conquered from the Baron that, well, claimed them without any right to them. I'm one proper Baron, and today we're going to be settling a new territory here in Manalords, possibly one of our last territories, entirely because once early access starts in earnest, this save game will no longer be compatible. You can see right here we have this beautiful little battlefield, and we came out at the end of the day victoriously, but of course some people did pass away. This can also be seen right here, our families have gone down significantly. Now of course I don't want their loss to be in vain. Our fortification oversees this entire valley as is, and indeed our city over there of Mark Tornfeld is ready to, well, get the resources that it desires. And this is exactly why we conquered this territory to begin with. If we zoom out, we can see a deep iron deposit, which means we can turn this into a permanent one. Today, we shall build a mining settlement and, well, let's see where we go from there. By the way, if you are enjoying this particular series, make sure to subscribe because I will be covering not just Manalords going forward, but also CK3, Victoria 3 and many other games that you might enjoy. I still find it quite fascinating, by the way, that St. George is on our banner. I wonder whether this is random or whether it is always St. George. I can tell you that in the period of the Ostsiedlung, it was very, very common for newly founded cities or for cities that converted away from paganism and towards Christianity to essentially say that whatever is plaguing you, the dragon that is threatening your village, will be slain if you indeed come over to the other side. So, hey, I mean, it's perfect here with how we have played this region. Now, with this having been taken over, it is time that we start, you know, making a choice of how we settle it. I will already tell you, I won't start settling it until, well, March rolls around, because settling areas in spring will always be easier, considering that these berries disappear once winter comes around. I will also say though, oh my god, that is a great berry deposit right here. I assume this can actually become a major, major city as well. We need it to essentially be able to produce ink and we want it of course to produce the weaponry and the armor that we need for our forces going forward. And I am getting spam here from family members joining one of my settlers. I assume it is because one member of this family passed away in battle and now other people are moving in as well, which is kind of crazy if you really think about it, because man, that is a quick remarriaging. Now what we are already going to do, especially considering of course that, you know, we are waiting for the next spring, is I would like to draw in some roads. Because, well, I will be building a very particular style of village right here, a style that we haven't done so far, and that feels like it should be the easiest one, but ultimately in my mind is the hardest one. I am talking about the Haufendorf. The Haufendorf is essentially a nucleated village. It is a village that is built irregularly and, well, quite frankly, if we want to dive into the history of this at least a little bit, it is a village that wasn't that common in the area where we are cosplaying in this game. If we are assuming that we are settling these lands freshly, then this village type is very much not normal. If you are undertaking a colonial effort, and we talked about this in the past, how the locator, for example, would essentially be tasked as a subcontractor with cultivating the land, attracting other settlers, and so on and so forth. If you're talking about this, then everything is basically running after a plan. Now, the Haufendorf is the opposite. In the Haufendorf, people kind of are just building things. Now, mind you, and I will show you this as well as we build it, this isn't done randomly, but it is done with essentially no structure, especially compared to how all the other villages that we have built have been created. Now, to start a good Haufendorf, and I really would recommend that you build one at least once, because this will be somewhat chaotic. If you're looking at all the other types of villages that I have been building here, and you've been thinking, hey, I would like to th do that as well, that is, of course, incredibly nice, but at the same time, try to build something that at least feels like it might be random. Like I said, though, it's not actually random. So let's talk about how they founded their center and where they went from there. You can see I have already created a bit of a, you know, beneficial area for ourselves here. You can see that there's a central, very flat area that is perfect for settling. And if we take a look at the actual Emma fertility right here, you can see there is plenty of room here as well. Now, I'm not going to be too stingy. I'm, I'm going to place fields even in suboptimal areas. Honestly, my one big lesson that I take away from this area right here that has only bad land is that, well, if you don't go all over the top, you can essentially build up enough wheat and just take a look at this. We have so much 
weed lying around here, you can generate enough weed to make it so that, well, you can survive, even if indeed the land itself is quite bad. This means that, yeah, we have our city core right here, and then in the surrounding area, mostly here, I think, on the hillside, and then down here, we will have village uh, fields. Now, in general, this is a very beneficial location for the aforementioned reasons. But at the same time, what has to be considered if we do a regular street planning and a regular city planning is that it wasn't entirely irregular. We have certain trade routes. There's one trade route over there that leads to the manor and down into our core territory, which means it is the most prosperous area. Then we have plenty of routes that lead up there and all the way over there. Also, additionally, yet again, securing trade routes. You can see this right here. We have one shortcut, we have one proper king's road, and then these king's roads running right here. This means that those, all of these, are very, very attractive locations to settle on. And that is essentially the direction that we want to take. Now, again, like I said, we aren't going to settle until, well, you know, March rolls around. But for the time being, that means we can kind of work on a street layout. So let's plan out the unplanned village. We have established that these are the important routes. So this right here is the center of importance. And that also means I can essentially go and say, okay... So if we were to place a church right here, roughly in the center, this is the space that we would need. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, well, it makes sense that if you come from this road, you would want to cross into the north. Because crossing into the north will allow you to directly connect to the king's road right there. Like I said, it's not actually random. It is just irregular. Right, with that road done, I think there's a good argument to be made to also have a road going just roughly up there. It makes a lot of sense, right? We want to pass through town directly. We don't want to go all the way around. That is an absolute unnecessary step to take. And then from here, we can go even further. And I think I have to replan this slightly already. But essentially, I hope that you can see where I am coming from. Let me take yet again a look at this church. Uh, again, if you're doing this yourself, then basically follow rough outlines, rough logics of where people would start and where they would want to go. I'm going to actually redraw this. I'm going to do it like this. There you go. Because what we have now will allow me, if I'm careful here, I think this should be enough, to proclaim an area effectively that will exist for the church. Yeah, there you go. And now directly opposite the church, and we haven't even settled this area, just for the record, keep that in mind. Exactly opposite of the church, I will also put down a beautiful little market area. This right here. Uh, let me check. Is this even maybe perfect for the church? I The church is slightly bigger. No, I'm going to put the church here and then we're going to indeed put the market into this square. Now, with that done, we now have a path to and from the uh, town center. But there could be more paths. For example, what if I want to reach the outer part of town? When you're drawing these lines, I would recommend, you know, doing them somewhat irregularly. This wasn't chaotic, but yeah, it makes sense. If I live down here, I want to go directly to the church or to the market, so that is why we're putting the street right there. This irregular planning right here is obviously counterintuitive. That is not how these roads or these cities were really done. Ultimately, they were being created in a time long before the settlement of these lands, so long before the settlement of modern-day East Germany, because, well, this is the type of village that you will find in the historical core areas of Germany. If you are just living somewhere, and if at any point you have some population growth, things will just grow. You're not planning all that much until the later periods of human existence, which means this is what things will look like. But since we are in a position where we're colonizing this, I think planning this out will make things a lot easier for you. What I'm imagining here essentially is that we will have a bunch of houses right here, all pointing towards the church and indeed towards the market. From there, we might do some streets going into this direction, connecting these roads, for example. But hey, that is neither here nor there because we will be doing that flexibly as we go. The main point is just that we, we want to plan out some basic roads so that we have some connections that otherwise might seem too random. What I see, for example, quite a bit is that people do, and let me just do this here in the road planning, people basically, and I don't want to call this the suburban planning because it's not really the suburban planning, but basically they will do these squares and then they will go, well, I need more space, let's do another square. And the houses at this square will point into this direction. Let me ask you, why would they do this? If this is the main area of town, why would you ever want to live into this direction? The fundamental idea of this has to be, where do you want to live as a new arrival, right? And in this case, for example, what we are looking at, let me just get rid of all of this, what we are looking at is a town where people settle irregular plots, sure, that much is true, but at the same time, they're doing it in a fashion where they're always interested to have much, much faster connections than anybody else to the immediate city center. 
So if you're planning to build, you know, something like this, keep that in mind. I think essentially that it would really just be wise to connect things. And what we're going to do right here, by the way, I will be connecting a road right here through the ceramics location all the way to this King's Road, just because, like I said, people want to be well connected. And all the roads right here are irregular. They all look odd, but they all lead exactly to the center of town. And, well, that is exactly what the purpose of this street is, as is. Right now, it looks odd. Looks like a deformed... Uh, a tennis ball right here but trust me it's going to turn out fine all right now in the meantime i was actually thinking i believe that we want to upgrade whatever we can and it seems like read raw the entire city every time i do it let's upgrade whatever we can when it lags out here to level three the idea is that we will get the richest the best the craziest city and hopefully this will make for a really nice look as well you know from the aerial view right here i'm going to upgrade everything uh, in the hope that it makes us more money in the hope that Indeed, it will just look beautiful. Oh, and upgrading these, of course, also makes it so that we will actually upgrade this town to be a medium town. And afterwards, it's not actually that much, you can see, into a major town. Oh, well, a large town. That is, that is amazing to see. My god, what am I even going to do with this point? So, we're getting two points, including this one. I could go down here and then towards rye cultivation, but I don't think we need it. We could go with foreign supplies. Um, honestly, that doesn't sound awful at all. If we go down for apiary, so beekeeping, down here enables the beekeeper to also collect wax. Uh, what do we do with that? <laughs> I don't actually know what you do with that, so I'm not sure I'm going to claim this. I think this entire wing over here, let me just tell you, when we do have to reset our world for the proper early access, I will definitely have something going down this direction. I think for the time being, I will just say, let's make it easier for Mark Tornfell to feed itself and we're going to do this by picking up foreign supplies. Foreign supplies, as I understand it, makes it so that I can put down these carts and they will basically just regenerate endlessly whatever resource they have. So, you know, so long as we have the appropriate regional wealth. So, uh, let's just take a look at you. What if I put you down right here? What, what does that actually look like? Uh, okay, we have to see after it is constructed. Let's put them just side by side. Actually, if they're carts, it, it looks kind of odd. You know what? I'm going to put you down there. It looks a bit, you know, more interesting, a bit further apart. I think sometimes that will add a lot to how the city feels. Oh yeah, look at that. It really is just a cart that gets one unit of firewood every time it spends one level of regional wealth. All right, I mean, fair enough. That sounds great. We have found... I don't know why they didn't do that historically. Just built this cart and stuff will show up. Easy. Oh, and look at that. I will say, I'm noticing now I would like to take down at least some of the trees here that block the view towards the church, because these trees were very much appropriate when we were a smaller town. But now, I mean, yeah, we are so big. Um, I'm going to try to do this in a relatively non-cheesy way, if possible. We just, well, it's pretty cheesy, don't get me wrong here, but we just have to put down... Ah, the snapping is gonna, is gonna really be painful. Everything here snaps. Um... You know what, I do want to take down the big tree, but not the adjacent stuff here. Oh my god, and settlement level already immediately increased again. We actually have now reached the maximum level here with Mark Tornfeld. Yeah, this looks nice. I really, really enjoy the look of this right here. This town has become the center of economic and societal experience in this region of the world. There was actually something interesting that I didn't really mention in the last video. I did rename this town into Mark Tornfelder, and this had a really, really important reason. Historically speaking, this kind of prefix, marked, does not necessarily indicate that there's anything special going on with you. We even actually hand these kind of prefixes out today in Germany and in Bavaria in particular for towns that are just social, cultural and economic central points. Historically speaking, of course, it was a lot more important than that. Let's say we are in the Ostsiedlung and let's say a town like this one arises, a town that really at some point commands a lot of value when it comes to economic output. At some point, you say, as the lord of this location, I have to get this town the right to hold a market. Not even if that attracts more people. At the end of the day, people are trading either way, market day or no market day. But it is a signal to everybody else in the world, and most importantly, to all of the other traders, that there is money to be made right here. So, after these towns would be founded, after they already were quite populated, the rulers would essentially say, I will indeed name this town a marked. 
and that would just make it so that it would become much more attractive to the people in the surrounding area. And you can see right here, by the way, we are yet to upgrade this, but we are going to do it, don't worry about it. The point is that I named Marktonfelde Marktonfelde because we are looking at a town that is now attracting more and more and more settlers. Which is also why our Rundling completely falls out of line. It doesn't really expand anymore and it is, it is what we call a Sackgassendorf, so a dead-end village, which essentially means it can't expand, there's nothing for it to do anymore. Let me tell you just straight up, if we continued this playthrough, I would probably do what we talked about at the very start of this campaign, where you basically rip out a couple of the houses in the uh, Rundling and make it so that there are two entrances, making it a much more active settlement. But of course, for the time being, that is not what we're going to be doing. For the time being, this town here is the pride of the region. Interestingly enough, of course, once a town had the prefix marked, that could also come with certain rights, not just with the market right, but also with rights related to having a sigil, being able to, you know, keep that sigil to indeed claim that sigil entirely and so on. And I, you know, basically expect this to be the case here as well. I assume that much like many of the Ostsiedlung towns, this town right here would indeed maybe actually use the uh, St. George, so the Dragon Slayer, as their symbol. They have settled here, of course, in former Sorbian core territory. And yeah, there are many towns like that. I know, for example, uh, I mean, okay, Bamberg has the cathed uh, cathedral, but I think the cathedral was built later. Like, it didn't actually uh, interplay with this at all. But I know Saxony and Thuringia in particular have a ton of towns that have George the Dragon Slayer as its sigil. Because, well, yeah they basically follow that exact same narrative. All right, but anyway, what do we do with the last point for Mark Tonfeld? Um, we could go for basic armor making, but clearly the city we are currently building is much more suited for that. We could go for forest management. I don't want to go with orchards. Uh, I have told you why last video, and I have heard in the comments that this is also currently bugged, so let's not waste our time with it. Establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. Ah, it's honestly just not interesting enough. I think we are going to go with some beekeeping just because we can nothing wrong with that what is this up there hunters also collect hides from traps oh that is that is good doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers and from gold pens oh my god i really like this for a, basically a non-farming town but okay let's put that aside let's just do some beekeeping we're not going to expand it because we physically can't there are no more points to be gained from this particular region but uh, if i can find it somewhere i can probably surely at some point where, where the hell is it? There it is. I can put down the apiaries. So if I understand this correctly, we want to put down two apiaries because that is the maximum. Um, I'm going to put it somewhere far off. Oh, no, you know what? I'm actually going to put it down. We are going to put this down here, I think, at the Rundling. Um, let's put it right here. That is ideal. And then the other one, I'm not so sure. We might put it here, take some trees with us. And I think I'm going to do that. Uh... Let's see how these apiaries really work, because I have no idea. Let's find out what they do. And oh my god, look at all these sheep. It's almost an invasive species at this point. <laughs> uh, that's that's a lot of sheep. That That is for sure a lot of sheep, huh? All right, so we got the apiaries. Now I'm going to put a couple of people in there. Um, are there actually bees zooming around here anywhere? I mean, okay, to be fair, you know what? It's winter. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I think I see them. Or is that just a coincidence? There was always like some some weird stuff flying around. Uh, I can't hear him, interestingly enough, but we'll come back here in the, in the summer, yeah? All right, and now it is March, my friends. The winter is gone and it is time that we settle. Let's start a new settler right here. I'm going to put down a settler's camp at the outskirt of these rough roads. That's fine. We're going to, of course, start with plentiful things right here. And that now puts us into a good starting position. Are you? Did you land... On the road, um, okay, I didn't have that in mind, but that is okay. Let's start, of course, with the basics. Now, in this case, um, I want to start building, basically, in a way where I almost virtually never place anything where the trees are. So that means, in this case, I would like to put the logging camp right here, and I want the logging camp to actually take down this forest, because I won't be building anything in it until it is gone. And next to that, of course, we can also put the saw pit. Uh, why don't we just, you know, for the time being, put the woodcutter's lodge right there as well. It is directly at this road. We're going to move it later. Don't worry about that too much. From there, we can place the hunting camp. Um, and we're going to place it right... I saw. There it is. We're going to place it right there. Doesn't need anything at all. So that should be completely fine. 
and then we're going to bring it in right here where the wood production is as well. After that, of course, I think the last thing for the time being is the forager's hut. The stuff hasn't yet regrown, but it'll get there in due time. Boom, didn't take a single tree with me, which means we can just go down to the main path right here. And that gives us the basic economic buildings here for Zelbitz. I think before long, we're going to turn Zelbitz into essentially a city that very, very similar to what is going on right here in Markthornfeld will become a rather important town. Now, this one will, of course, be focused on iron production, but it has to be pointed out, I don't want this to just be a small outpost like we have it right here in Lehmdorf, where we basically just have one street village and then, you know, these farm stats right here. I want this to become a major, major town. It is always so nice seeing stuff just start out completely anew. Uh, I do, by the way, uh, want to order another ox. I do have to upgrade this first, though. And to do that, we need to get some logging cap. We need to get the soap pit going. And once both of these stand, I'm actually, or once all of our buildings stand, I should say, I'm actually going to assign the oxen uh, or the ox to the soap pit so that we can make sure that some trees make it there. Because having two oxen, definitely way, way better than, well, not having them. Well, fellas, let's cut some tree. And let's make sure, actually, that you start in this general area. I want that gone. Uh, we're going to clear this bit by bit until we have a pretty, pretty clear path into our fortification here. That is the base idea, I would argue. It must be so nice for these people. They are technically speaking colonists, but they have a rich starting position. They already have a fully committed lord that says, well, yes, you will settle here and you will be succeeding because I will finance it since I need the resources that we can secure right here. This is a very, very safe endeavor. Uh, now, when this kind of stuff normally happens, of course, and I mean, I don't really want to say it is necessarily wrong here, but you know what? Let me spawn in relatively close to it. I, I can just put down a a road right here. Uh, what we have right here in the game right now is kind of odd, so not necessarily wrong. I, I think it should be somewhere behind this tree line right here. But I've mentioned this before, Manor Lords currently does only have one map, and that one map does not really have any mountains or hills. Now, in this period, it's not unheard of, and I mean, I'm not finding it, so I don't know how the people did it. Uh, it's not unheard of. <laughs> I straight up just did not spot it. I, I might be blind here. It is not unheard of to find ore just in the ground. It is called, uh, I believe in, in English, I believe it is called bog ore. And basically, or bog iron. And basically, we're talking about resources that, yeah, we can take out of pretty much the flat earth. It works, and it could even be pretty rich. But of course, in this period, and in the Ostsiedlung, we have the very, very famous case of the ore mountains. So the uh, Erzgebirge today, as it is known, those are the mountains that were being settled by the Germans at the time because we knew that there was going to be massive, massive riches in there. Of course, yeah, I, I don't actually think we can see it here in the ground, but okay, anyway, what I'm talking about is, of course, that the ore mountains were peak. They were front and center for gaining more material out of the mountains and gaining it quickly. Now, having no mountains at all makes it so that we can't really do that. <laughs> the way I see it, basically, is just we're looking at a situation where, okay, normally, let me just tell you, a mining town looks different from what we are doing right here. That is why I'm building this Haufendorf. You know, a bit of a, an interesting approach rather than just building a town to mine this stuff. Uh, but in general, I would love it, or I will love it, whenever they add more elevated maps here. Because, man, you know, this tiny, teeny, tiny mountain town uh, along a river, maybe, that is mining and that then delivers that stuff all the way down into the valley to the rich city. Ah, that is going to be a beautiful, beautiful map. And yeah, just looking at that, look at how fast they are at indeed getting rid of all these trees. In the future campaign, uh, we're going to respect nature entirely, which means we won't build into the forest until we clear it. And, well, you can see that is quite viable. And boom, there you go. We're going to get two oxen and then we will be in a pretty good spot. Now, obviously, we also do need the base buildings that you just need, no matter what you do. Uh, I'm going to take a look at this. Oh, this is just, this is beautiful. Wow, I, I like this a lot. That is very, very nice. And we're going to place this right here. That is essentially ideal. Uh, so there goes the, uh, the well. Then we're going to go ahead and build a marketplace in this entire square. It's going to be, yeah, big enough to maintain a pretty sizable city. That should be uh, quite all right. We can't place the wooden church just yet, but... It will go literally right there so that we have them directly next to each other or opposing each other, I should say. Um, I do want to build the burgage plots for the starters here somewhere else. Okay, so my reasoning here basically is that 
I want these settlers to be able to have a backyard because that will really aid us in initial food production, which brings up, you know, uh, just happiness. And that will, of course, bring up how quickly people migrate here. So I'm going to place these burgage plots here, the initial ones, pretty much at the outskirts of town. Um, I'm going to place them like this, sure. We're going to make them pretty big. We're going to place them just right here, pointing inwards up the hill. They have their own little compartment here. And whenever we actually get rid... Let me take a look at this. Uh, whenever we get rid of the land here, yeah, we can give them a couple of fields behind their houses as well. I think we're going to have uh, fields right here and right here, you know, as the entrance to town. I think that is going to work out just fine here. And you know it is scary, don't get me wrong here. Building something like this with a tree plant thing where it doesn't look like anything special. I tried to do this in the best way possible. We shall, say, uh, we shall see whether that actually works out. And I'm going to actually put in a connector right here. My idea being... There's going to be a, a very small set of houses, and I might have to slightly move this. Let's find out about this. A small set of houses in this particular area. Oh, that totally works. Yeah, we're going to do it exactly like this. And then behind that, we can have more houses, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I, I think we're on a good path here. I just got an achievement. Reach 100% approval in a large town. Apparently, um, that worked out, huh? Huh. I am so surprised. Apparently, everybody is incredibly happy, and you know what? That just means to me that I want to keep upgrading right here. Oh, you're not happy. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you a small market here. I think we're going to get rid of these trees. Uh, they have served us well in keeping things fairly hidden here. But with the size of this town, it just doesn't really make sense. Let's put some more market stalls down there in the hope that there will be some local market stalls, you know, selling firewood to these locations right here. We'll see how it goes. Maybe we just need more people willing to sell firewood. Uh, you know, just put more people in a woodcutter's lodge, something like that. Oh, and you know what, now they're thinking about it, is it down to the honey? I guess there must be honey traders here now, and every now and again when there is honey, everybody is incredibly, incredibly happy. Well, you know, that's nice to see. Now this right here is something that you would indeed see as well. We are going to get the backyards like this, and what this means is effectively that they can do, of course, you know, their own food production, but maybe more importantly, and I say maybe here, it is quite interesting to see that we are building them on a hillside here, so the houses are rather flat they are on a pretty flat area but then their gardens are indeed on this kind of slope and that is not all too uncommon considering that you can't really use this slope for anything else i'm gonna uh, put some chicken in there as well we're going to have some variation uh, so in general this is actually quite the nice start for a village oh and there you go zelbit's already now leveled up uh I think we're going to go ahead and immediately pursue what we need here. We need one, two, three, four, five. We need five points, which is the second highest level. Zelbitz will have to become a major town. Well, actually, a medium-sized town to get all the way down here. So we can't really waste any points. We definitely need deep mining and charcoal burning actually wouldn't be bad at all. The charcoal here should definitely have some value as well. All right, now as for more houses, um, let me just place these down, right? I just basically want to see where we can take it. I kind of dislike that corner, but... All right, as long as I can place these houses, I oh, that is nice. Even four people can live here. And uh, they don't have a backyard, which is sad to see, but hey, I've seen worse. I think we're going to be fine here. I would like a pretty chunky set of houses here if possible. Ah, uh, but no backyard if I build it like that, huh? Um, if I... Okay, you know what? I'll take this. That's fine. We are facing the correct direction, at least from my angle, you know, from my point of view here. Uh, let's make it so that you are at least... Man, I need... Listen, I'm going to make you bigger then because I need some backyards so that we can have some central artisans which otherwise uh, otherwise may become a hurdle. Now you can see that we are planning very differently uh, sized shapes here. We're doing this because, like I said, this is essentially the organically grown area. Different from other locations, different from, you know, topics such as uh, the settlements that we've done so far. This is just what happens. Uh, if you happen to come into this town in an era where maybe it wasn't the biggest one, maybe, you know, there was a lot of space to go around, you would get a big location. If you came late, then, well, you came late. Good luck to you, fella. Can I get this? Oh, look at that. Yeah, I like that. Maybe even like this. Yes, that is... I, I can accept that. That is perfectly fine. Now, here is where the church goes. We don't have the resources for that yet, but that is definitely where we want to put that. Could I do something a little bit cheeky like this? Oh, I... And there you go. With this church, now we are finally going to be reaching approval levels that, you know, will bring some migration. Okay, enemy unit has been spotted. We see a good chunk of bandits, and where are they entering in? Oh no. Is this a repeat of the previous burning of Leemdorf? We do now have some troops there, but is it going to be enough? Uh, let's find out, I guess. <laughs> 
I'm going to rally down there and I will pray that I won't need this. Could I? Wait a minute. Please. Ah, I would have to dissolve one of my units. If I dissolve one of my units, I can raise some archers there. Oh, that is that is nasty. Okay, well, where are you going then, pal? They are going to Lehmdorf. I hate your guts. <laughs> Alright, let's see whether we can defend against them. I really do find the army system in general to actually be in a really, really good state. I just think, with the way militias work and the fact that I can't have more units than this down here, it's going to be very, very difficult to defend everything once you hold it because, well, you either just exclusively uses, uh, use retinues, which is kind of boring because the unit types specifically are not retinues, or you put yourself in a position where half your countryside can get burned before somebody arrives because nobody is stationed there. I would like some station there. You can see I brought enough warbows in here. Um, I should be able to raise a ton of people here if I wanted to. But yeah, there are some difficulties there as you can see. Alright, now my plan here is basically that this retinue can just pull them a little bit, you know. Make sure that they don't harass the city itself so that these troops can indeed arrive and safeguard it. That would be ideal here. And yeah, just for the record, it seems to be going perfectly. I have to do a lot of running, but of course, so do they. Let's bring all of our troops here as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, no matter how you look at it, I think our precautions here, they are working. This retinue being able to pull them away from Lehmdorf and closer to our border was a smart choice. And now it is time to fight them. Now, even now, I wish that we had more Gambazons, but I think we're doing all right here when I just look over my people. I'm pretty sure we're seeing more Gambazons than they had in the past. Oh, and I see. They're being attacked from all the way over here, huh? Well, you know what? We should be golden here. I'm just going to use this uh, militia unit here, these normal fighters, the footmen, to actually wipe these units out as soon as possible. Oh, and we did lose a couple of units here. God, that is so sad to see. But we should be golden. Uh, we're just going to wipe these here entirely, and then we can aid them out. Our retinue is of literally no aid. They're just too slow. You know what? Just stay home, pal. <laughs> I mean, listen, the positive news are that we lost barely anybody. We did lose a couple of people, but yeah, this was much, much better than the first Lehmdorf. I just wish I could organize my army in a different fashion. All right, and now that we have gotten rid of this entire forest, I'm going to change where they are active. I also want to take this one out, but I can already tell you that we are now in a much, much better position. I'm going to change basically the road network a little bit here. We can come from all the way up here, go around the mountain and go up here. So we now have another connection into town that will aid us in growing this town in a rather natural fashion. People do want to move along this road. That is why the road exists. It's not just me drawing it randomly. It is because people want this usability here. And listen, I have to say this partially for myself. Trust the plan. Right now, this looks weird. I think we're going to work it into something. Ideally, by the way, and this is an interesting tidbit, not too relevant for us because I will have to cheese it. I will probably do it. But basically, uh, Haufendörfer very, very often at the later stages of their existence got a slight barricade. It's called an Etter and it is very, very tiny. It's not really much, if anything, you know, just a small fence, but it was effectively a fenced area. Once we are done with the village core, we will probably be expanding this village and I will be using the estate's walls to essentially you know, captivate this entire thing here. But I can only do this, and we've covered this in the past, once we are done with the village, because you can't place any new buildings once you place the wall around it. So, once we're done here, we're going to surround this whole thing with a beautiful little etter. And so, we are just entering the first winter for this village, and we are already building our beautiful chapel. Now, make no mistake, this village will be pretty, pretty rich very, very quickly. Different from all the other villages that we've built, the reason here is pretty straightforward. We will have something they want, and that is, of course, the iron and so on. As soon as we have a blacksmith here, we can start selling tools endlessly. And, well, the world will always want to buy tools. So, yeah, we're going to be printing money and, well, deservedly so, if I might say so myself. The reason for this, you know, early church, of course, is just that I need to be able to upgrade people and I need migration. We are currently still sitting at a meager 42% popularity despite this food stall. I mean, my god, having so much food. I guess the reason is that everybody lives over there. Maybe that was a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> Listen, what do you want me to do, okay? Uh, they will get their fair share of properties eventually. I hope anyway, okay? I, I don't want to bet on it. Oh, and this is kind of exciting. This will also be the first time now that I can actually build the charcoal kiln. Um, I'm going to go ahead and immediately build this very, very closely, of course, to where we actually are harvesting stuff. Uh, in 
from my knowledge, and I'm honestly, please correct me here because I'm pretty sure I'm not entirely correct, but I think these were very often even just built in like pretty isolated locations in a forest, if I'm not mistaken here. Now, it sounds dangerous at first glance, but I'm pretty sure that with the preparation, with the way they were constructed, there wasn't really a risk of any fire. But in general, what you're looking at here is, of course, a much more efficient way of, you know, uh, well, heating your home. This is a big, big deal, and it's the first time that I am able to build this in this campaign. Making it so that, yes, indeed, the wood in there is burning into charcoal, and that can then be used to heat our houses. This is, of course, very efficient. I'm going to move this out. I think I will be moving that into the forest proper, but... Like I said, right now, all of our forestry issues are basically handled so that we can clear some area. And you can already see that this has taken a great effect. If you look around, you can see all of this used to be forest. Now it is just a hillside on which we can be building going forward. And now we haven't even, just for the record, started mining. None of that has happened. I have essentially uh, done the suburban thing, okay? I've done the American suburban thing where I build all the buildings and the people come thereafter. What we have done here is, like I said, we have followed the plan where we basically have a rather irregular pattern, but all the roads, all the main roads anyway, I should say, make sense. We have this. This is a King's Road, right? You can see a lot of houses are oriented towards it. This one cuts down into the other side of the King's Road, so it is a bit of a shortcut. We are building houses there as well. And then as we go down this road, you can see that based on how important it is to the city's life, I have placed the actual direction of the houses. So, for example, these are right here on this road because this road leads to the market. If they pointed into this direction, the daily walk of these people would be longer. The same thing, of course, right here. It all points towards the city center. Uh, center. Now, like I said, this is semi-random. It's, it's honestly the, the wrong word. I struggle to find the right words there, but the idea of the Haufendorf is that it is random, sure, but basically it every house, the way it is built and so on, essentially has an implicit design. Ask yourself, yes, sure, the roads might be random, but why would I ever orient my house, for example, to point towards this route if I could directly point towards the church and the marketplace? That is the core idea, and I think we can see this here. Different, very different from the Rundling and the Angerdorf. You can see that we have many, many roads going in and out because it is so irregular. But of course, at the same time, we have a couple of main roads. This right here for sure is a main road. This right here, once we start building these houses in this location, will become a main road as well. Then we have the central road going through town. You can see it right there. And then, of course, the other road right here. This design itself is quite sensible when it comes to where the people would basically orientate the houses. And we still have the central place of the wooden church. The one big question, and I'm not sure where I will put it, is the Almende. Um, this basically differs from village to village. As these villages expanded, of course, things may be changed as well. I may leave this right here in the clear for the time being. In general, like I say, this design is not a part of the Ostsiedlung. If you look at particular Germany maps where you take a look at village forms, you will find this design to be essentially exclusive to the core German areas. But I think, honestly, this actually came out quite well. A big thing that if you want to build something semi-random like this that you need to take into account is where are your buildings facing? Because those roads will, of course, be wider. Let's take a quick look at this. Just look at this road. You can immediately tell this is an incredibly important road for the entire town. You can see it is used very often. There is a certain width to it. Same, of course, goes for this road right here. It is just an absolutely fat road right there. Whereas, of course, any road that just cuts in that is utilized because, well, why wouldn't it be, right? Those are, of course, much, much thinner. I am actually quite happy with how this turned out. We are nowhere near the end of this particular settlement. You can see I've built 34 plus 5 living spaces and we currently only have eight families. In the next video, we are going to continue building this one. We are, of course, going to go on and actually set up the iron production to make some money. And I want to farm, I want to have pastures. I mean, honestly, this is a nice wide open area. This will be a region of wealth, but for the time being, we have just begun settling it, and I foresee a glorious, glorious future. The big question is, what should we name this one? So far, I feel kind of obligated to call it Americana, just because, again, I have pre-built all these houses. But anyway, let me know what you think. We're going to continue this, and I will see you later, alligator.